flashback recording is finally here for the Elgato 4K60 Pro, as well as some quality of life features and an update to that Streamlink feature I covered a month or so back. We're going to check that out in today's video. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. I'm Evos Vox here to make tech easier and more fun, and today we're taking a look at Elgato's 4K capture utility with the new update version 1.1. In this update, they have added flashback recording. They have made the 4K or the stream link, which I will show you how to use in a moment, more accessible. And they've made a couple cool quality of life improvements. So we're going to just kind of jump into it here and check out the new UI. So when looking at the UI, you may notice it looks a little bit more polished than it used to, which is kind of nice. You have the source and capture frame rates and the capture bit rate up here, kind of labeled a little bit more clearly and more obviously as well as the amount of free space left on your target recording drive, which you can change in the settings cog here over in the recording tab, where you can change your bitrate and you can disable flashback recording if desired and set a max duration that it will buffer, which is really handy. Down here at the bottom of the user interface, you now have this little timeline progress with the playhead, and this shows you the current point in the recorded history that you are seeing right now. And so currently I'm a few minutes back from real time. If I click the live button here, that will shoot the playhead to the real time position. There's still some latency with Elgato's 4K capture utility compared to the OBS feed from the capture card, but more or less real time feed. Now you can actually go back in the feed or even if you are live and hit the pause button, which will hold you at this point in time to reference or be able to remember to go back and capture at that point and it will still keep buffering the flashback recording so now if i hit play it's going to play from that point forward with that buffer still going or i can hit live and of course the whole point of this is you can go back in time here and hit the record button which now pulsates to indicate that it's recording it fills the recording with that full buffer that you have and then starts recording the live real-time feed and then you can tell it to stop recording Got to wake my PS4 up here. This is now the fourth time I've tried recording this video. <laughs> there is one limitation, however, and that is, of course, that there is no live commentary feature or microphone input feature yet on the software. I just hit my microphone cable. Whoops. They're still trying to update the 4K capture utility to bring in all of those features from the original Game Capture HD software. So hopefully it will come in time because with this other feature that I'm going to mention in a moment, it is kind of necessary to be fully useful. But the inclusion of flashback recording is incredible as this is something I use regularly. Whenever I do my capture card testing or just want to capture clips for videos in the first place, I heavily leverage the instant replay feature of OBS Studio to save that buffer to files. And whenever I was using the older game capture app, I was using the flashback recording religiously because I do not have the time nor tenacity to go back through millions of full-length gameplay recordings to cut out individual clips. I'd rather just capture those individual clips after the fact, and be good to go. Now, the second major update here, if you go into the settings tab, under the general tab, you now have more direct access to the stream link beta. Now, this I currently goes to the generic Elgato gaming website for some reason. I went ahead and mentioned that to them. A little obnoxious. Uh, but you are able to enable this. Now, I covered this in a previous video, but I'll give you a quick rundown. This uses the NDI streaming protocol to allow you to record a copy of your feed here in the 4K capture utility without any overlays or anything at full 4K 60 quality or 1440p 144 or whatever you're bringing in and then send a 1080p 60 signal to your OBS or XSplit streaming program and add that to your live stream with your overlays, your face cam, and so on. This is really cool. Other than like I mentioned before, there's still no live commentary, so you won't have any microphone audio for that recording. So you'll either have to sync it up with your uh, live stream audio or just not have the audio and just have the clips. But if you're someone who does want to use a lot of clips for montages or something like that from your live streams, then combining the stream link here with the flashback recording while you're streaming, you can use flashback recording to capture individual clips and so on. Pretty handy. One limitation here is they have not yet updated the Elgato Stream Deck capability for flashback recording for the 4K capture utility. In fact, as of the version I have, there's no 4K capture utility interaction at all. Let me check for an update here. There is no update. 
So that is definitely something I would like to see is the ability to set, because that's the important part. If you're live streaming, you need a hotkey for this. Setting up a hotkey to capture the flashback recording will be incredibly important, but I'm assuming they'll get to that very shortly. Now, the Streamlink functionality will require OBS NDI plugin installed in your OBS, or I think XSplit supports it by default. I do have the OBS NDI coverage video linked in the video description, as well as a more detailed overview of how the Streamlink functionality works. By default, it only supports 720p 30, 60, and 1080p 30 and 60, because frankly, recording 4K 60 FPS, streaming 1080p 60, and sending a full or higher, and sending a full 4K 60 NDI feed across one computer is just far too much for most computers to handle. In fact, I even think my i9 36 core or 36 thread monster here would struggle with that too. So it's not necessarily a realistic situation. So by default, it's just set to 1080p 60, which will work perfectly for 99% of people's live streams. Now, they did mention in the uh, changelog Reddit post, an engineer commented that there was a secret way to edit the max resolution by, by going to app data, roaming, Elgato, 4K capture utility, and then editing the settings.json file. Uh, I did this. Went down here. Where's it at? Max stream link resolution. I set this to 3840 by 2160, but it doesn't really work for me. Like here, I'm going to go ahead and edit that here. Max width, 3840. Oh, wait a minute. That's probably what I messed up. Max height, 2160. I actually may have discovered what the heck I messed up. All right. So you say you, you change right here where it says max stream link resolution, height 2160, width 3840. That's kind of backwards. Then save the file, close it. Reopen 4K Capture Utility. Go into your settings. Yep, nope, it's still doing the same thing. So under Format, it now goes blank. And then when I tried adding it within OBS, it just crashed the 4K Capture Utility. In theory, that's supposed to be a secret to make you or let you change that. Not working for me. So 1080p60 at the moment is definitely the way to go. And like I said, for most people's situations, that's a more realistic use case. Now, to add it in OBS here, you, of course, like I said, need the OBS NDI plugin installed. I already have a 4K60 Streamlink scene created, so I just need to add a source, NDI source. We'll call this 4K60 Pro. Hit OK. It's going to detect my computer name, which is Trunks. And then the 4K capture utility is the source of the stream. You want to leave bandwidth on highest, of course. Sync will be internal since it's routing through your computer anyway. And basically leave the rest of the options alone and hit OK. And give it a second, and whammo, we now have a uh, NDI stream of our 4K 60 feet here. And if I go through the menus, there is a slight added extra delay, although you can't really tell because that's the same delay you see in the <laughs> 4K Capture Utility app. There's like virtually no delay between them, so that's handy. Uh, but there is, of course, a few milliseconds added delay. But overall, you're getting a 60 FPS 1080p stream here to have your overlays, add your face cam, things like that easy peasy. So Elgato still has some work to do in terms of adding more features to this, the live commentary feature, interaction with the stream deck, things like that, but they are making progress and this is definitely a great step forward. Just wanted to cover the update here for you guys. It's been a little while since I've covered these capture card software updates. If you have any questions, leave them in the description down below or in the comment section down below rather, or go check, go check out the Reddit post linked in the video description or you can probably ask the Elgato team directly. Hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Subscribe for more awesome tech tips and content and things. I have a bunch of capture card reviews in the works already, so stay tuned for more of those, including a new video with the 4K60 Pro that I'm super stoked to share. I'm Apos Vox, and I will see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options be it DonorBox, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind-the-scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com Discord. Thanks!